What's up YouTube, Dal here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you an update to the Fallen of Albaz profile. Now obviously I haven't really updated this, I've done a lot of the branded variations, but I haven't actually updated the core of the original profile that I did a while back. So this is all about OTK going second, and sometimes if you're not going to be OTK, it's all about board breaking, and actually utilising Fallen of Albaz on field effect. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. With all of that out of the way, I'm going to take you through this full updated Fallen of Albaz Go Second profile. So it's Fallen of Albaz, so you are rocking too. Now technically we play five copies of Fallen of Albaz in the deck because we also play triple fusion deployment. Now the reason fusion deployment is so good is yes we lock ourselves in fusions but we really don't care about that. What makes fusion deployment so good is it lets you keep an Albaz in the deck for your brand of fusion but then it also lets you special one from the deck to then trigger its effects. The best thing on top of that as well is if you do have a branded lost up active already then by activating fusion deployment that is the point where your opponent needs to interrupt it or stop it otherwise what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up going into fallen of albaz discarding a card and they cannot negate his effect to fusion summon a card you could add in um less so in place of fusion deployment but as an additional form of fusion deployment is you could put in uh, ecclesia the victorious the uh, one that basically lets you quick effect or special summon it if your opponent controls more monsters and then quick effect tag it out so that is definitely a uh, high cost upgrade but like with my previous profiles i've tried to keep the cost down so this gives you room for improvement room for investment should you want to but if you don't want to be spending uh, like 30 pound per copy or you don't want to be putting in stuff like um, the DPE package and everything like that, you still have a way to make this deck playable and compete. We've then got Triple Spring Gun Kit. Now this card's actually really, really good in this version of the deck for the pure fact that you don't want to be normal summoning Albaz. You want to be using Albaz off of the back of stuff like Fusion Deployment. You want to be using Albaz um, as Fusion Material from the deck. You don't actually want to normal summon it. So that's where Kit comes into play because Kit then gives you an additional six copies of, uh, well, I say six copies. It makes the total of Branded Fusion six copies. Um, off the top of that as well, Kit can then be used as fusion material when you go to try and fuse um, with, in your hand, and it can also be used with spoiler mask change to the way plan as well. And I'll explain that when we get there. We've also got one Albion, the Shrouded Dragon. Now in this version, um, you don't mind this because this can become an additional 2500 beat on the board to help succeed in the OTK, but it can also be used to send the trap card to the graveyard, recycle the branded fusion should that get negated, give you a blind draw, uh, and it just gives you a bit more recurability for the grind should you need to enter it. Um, but the idea behind this, like I said, is to break your entire opponent's board and then put either OTK material on the board or put up se several disruptions so your opponent can't rebuild. Uh, we've then got the Light Hex Seal, and this actually helps you uh, integrate that board clear because you go into Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon, which at current I'm just a massive fan of. I think it's so easy to make. The fact it's, uh, the fact it's unaffected by um, traps as well means it can go second without really worrying too much about back row. Uh, and then the fact that it's 3400 and can clear all of your opponent's monsters is very, very good because then as you're pushing for OTK, it leaves um, it leaves it open for all of your other attack monsters. So straight away, like you're probably going to make it with Albion, and Albion can still attack. So that still gives you a free 2500 attack directly to your opponent's life points. If you put a Kaiju on your opponent's board, and you've got a Kaiju, you're going to then be able to put more damage on board, uh, and then you're pretty much building off from there, because this is all happening without conducting your normal summon, whereas your normal summon could very easily be Fallen of Albaz, fuse with that Kaiju you've given your opponent, and then build from there. Speaking of the Kaijus, we've got two Thunder King and the one Gadala. Um, you could arguably make the Thunder King the um, other big one, the Jizakuru. And the reason you do that is because we do play the Kaiju Slumber. So if you were to open up your Gandala, then your Kaiju Slumber is dead because it needs to summon two with different names. So that's one little tweak you might want to make. But the reason I've done it this way is you actually want to give your opponent this because when you use Fallen of Albaz, you fuse with it, they can give you an insanely powerful Titanoclad. Because the way it works is you would go into an Albion, Albion can then banish the Titanoclad, uh, sorry, the Thunder King and the Albaz from your graveyard, and then your Titanoclad becomes an absolute beast. So not only have you cleared your opponent's board off with something like Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, but you've then contact fused with their monster to make your Albion. Your Albion then makes an absolute tonk version of Titanoclad and lets you push in for game there. 
onto the hand traps. Chill Nibiru, like we're going second. Not only does Nibiru um, help you deal with combo decks, but it also then gives you and gives your opponent a high level light token that can then be used for Albion uh, and, and let you kind of fuse away with that as well. So the worst thing in the game is to give your opponent a token you can't deal with, whereas naturally you've got five copies or five routes to naturally deal with it, not to mention stuff like Kaiju Slumber and everything else. Triple Ash Blossom is the best generic hand trap right now for the pure fact that Yes, a lot of people are playing through it, but if you drop an Ash at the right time, and I've said this many a time before in my previous profiles, if your opponent activates Brand Infusion, you're probably better off letting it go through, because the chances are what they're going to be going into is a Mirror Jade. Now, if they're playing in the route that they're trying to get to Brand Infusion, then the gamble you can make is when they go to activate Mirror Jade's effect and send Albion, you know they're going to dig for a Branded in Red. That's when you Ash Blossom, because by Ash Blossoming them at that point, they've lost their Mirror Jade effect, They've gone to their end phase and they've lost uh, the Branded in Red. So unless they're already sitting on a backup copy of Branded in Red, you've pretty much stopped it. And you'll know if they're sitting on a, a copy of Branded in Red because they would have set it during that uh, before that end phase. The last two is two Ghost Bell. Now, if you wanted to play the Gamma Package, you can cut these out. Um, and then you'd be bumping the deck up to, I believe, like a 43 card deck. But that's where you can take out Mars Change 2. And the reason you would go with the Gamma Package is for the pure fact that it gives you light materials, it gives you monsters with 2500 attack in the graveyard um, or on the field, and the idea is that you just get the ability to kind of protect from an Ash. You can't do anything else with it after that because you're only going to be able to use it for fusion material, but it does give you that ability to kind of play around an Ash or play around and negate considering you've got Fusion Deployment, which is an Ash Bait, um, Interactive Kaiju Slumbar, and then of course Branded Fusion. So you've got a lot of points where you're like, come on and ash me, let's see what you can do, and go from there. Alternatively as well, if you wanted to, you could put in the uh, Shadol package that I've shown you before, because Shadol Fusion is a one card route into uh, Shekinaga, and then can ultimately lead you into the Fossil King, um, and that can then help you do piercing damage and everything else like that as well. So for the spells, Triple Branded Fusion. Triple Dark Ruler no more. Now, obviously, if you have Droplets, you can easily upgrade to Dark Ruler no more. But simply being able to go drop this, Kaiju Slumber, you're clearing your opponent's board, or, well, front row at least. Um, and yes, you've got to be very careful because Mirror Jade will then be able to trigger in the graveyard if you're doing that. Uh, and that's where you kind of want to try and contact Fuse with Mirror Jade or you want to try and get Mirror Jade off the board uh, a different way. So keep that in mind. Or the best thing is you can just go with Mask Change 2. Um, and I absolutely love this. So being able to mask change two, uh, let me just double check if it has to go to the graveyard. Um, oh, no, it needs to leave the field, so it'd still destroy everything in the end phase, I believe, as well. Um, but yeah, I, I just really like mask change. It can help turn Albaz. So if your opponent tries to change something to Albaz, you change mask change two and tag it out. The best target for this will be Kit, because you can turn Kit, which is your normal summon that gets you into branded fusion, discard a card, turn Kit into a Dark Law. So whether you're pushing for the attack in, in um, the battle phase, this can really come up, because then you can attack with Kit for 1700, and your opponent's like, yeah, I'll take it. They've got nothing else, and then you go, cool, drop this, and then you upgrade Kit from being just a 1700 attack in that one card, it then becomes a 4100 attack, because then Dark Law is 24 on top of that. So really, really good option there. And then we've gone, again, we've gone another kind of route of twos. It's entirely up to you on if you want to bump any of these to three. If anything, you'd probably put uh, talents to three, and then you could probably put poly to three. But it's just kind of like board breakers and options for you. So talents gives you that ability to steal a card, draw a card to get into your power play cards. Um, Super poly is just there to help you break the board as easy as possible. So if you don't open up with Dark Lord no more, you need to get rid of your opponents like Mirror Jade and DPE, or you need to be able to get rid of your opponents kind of um, set up board already. Sometimes people will end on a Dragoon and you need to get rid of that as easily as possible. The Chalice is one of them ones, again, as I explained in my previous profile, where you kind of want your opponent to activate something because they'll hold it back fear in an imperm. And then when they try and activate it because you've got a monster on the board or you've got a card on the board, uh, you can then drop a Chalice and it will negate it. Most people are putting their stuff in defense, so the attack um, addition is not the end of the world, um, but it kind of comes down to the personal environment and how you want to change it. Then we've got the one Duster, the one Red Reboot, and the one uh, Retribution. So the Retribution, again, quite like the Cyber Dragon one, is if you can't get to game, you can get into Retribution um, by sending Albion off of the back of your Mirror Jade, and then you've got another form of Negate, which will then help you recycle the Branded Fusion during your next turn. You've got the red reboot, because you're going second, you want to blow out back row or um, shut down back row. So you're kind of getting that balance of 
okay, I've got the ability, should I face a back row deck? But if I don't face a back row deck, I'm not flooding my deck with um, back row hate, um, just in case that it then all becomes dead. So that's why we've got a lot of twos. It's all about balancing between the two at the moment because this is to be used as a structure to then adapt your locals. If your locals is all front row, no um, no back row, then you can take out Dust Start and Red Reboot and you can put in more Kaijus, you can put in more um, board breakers, board wipers. It's entirely up to you. Um, but if it's more back row and less front row, so for example, Flunderies, then that's where you take out Super Poly because it would be dead. Um, and then you start putting in Imperms and, and stuff that will then stop that happening. Then, of course, going into the extra deck, we've got two Albion, uh, two Mirror Jade, two Lubellion. There's like a lot of flex spots in the extra deck because you've got a lot of room to mess around with depending on what you want. Um, two Titanoclad and the one Sprid. Now, obviously, the idea behind all of these is um, you can use both of these for the, your Albaz Super Poly targets, which is great. So Fallen of Albaz plus a Dragon plus a Light um, <clears throat> plus a monster with 2,500 or more plus an Effect Monster Special Summon this turn. So this is obviously your route out if your opponent is playing Contact C. Uh, and then, of course, you've got um, Mirror Jade as well. So the best thing about Mirror Jade is you can Normal Summon Fallen of Albaz, use this effect to discard, and then use an opponent's Link, Fusion, Synchro, XYZ on the board and make Mirror Jade. So... Again, it's just an insanely good uh, super poly target, and that doesn't even use your... So basically, imagine you just go fusion deployment, they let that through, you go Albaz to fuse into your own Mirror Jade. Like, straight away, your next loot of plays, or if we offer your brand of fusion, that's when you can then start using Albion or Lubellion. Ideally, Albion, because it can still attack, and this can then lead you in a t into a Titanoclad. So straight away from two cards, you've ended up getting a Titanoclad, a Mirror Jade, well, three cards because you need to discard off of Albaz, but you've got six cards to play with anyway. But you've gone into an Albion, a Mirror Jade, and a Titanoclad. Like, what more could you possibly need? Tyrant Dragon, my personal favourite right now. I just absolutely love it. It's so good. Um, you don't use it as much, but it's quite nice to have that. So if you end up facing an Eldritch matchup, as long as they don't get Skill Drain on board first, you go Brand Fusion into this. The only way they can deal with this is they need to send Lord from hand or they need to then um, summon Lord back to make him 3500. But the idea is this will then help you clear your opponent's board um, and then kind of go from there. And then your super poly targets of the Dracus the Pelio, the Mud Dragon and the Venom. Pretty straightforward on that one. And then the double um, dark Masked Hero Dark Lore. So again, personal preference on this can easily be taken out. Again, if you wanted to put the Shadol package in, that's where Shekinaga and that's where um, the Skull King comes into play. But you've also got the ability, if you wanted to, to amp this up and make it more lore relevant. So what you would do is you would take out the Kaijus and you'd put in the Dogmatica package. That would then follow the lore closer and more correctly. And then what that will allow you to do is that will give you more go first plays. So it's a very good side deck option because that will then give you access to stuff like Winder. Whereas Branded Fusion already gives you access to Winder as well. But it gives you access to Double Winder. It also gives you access to uh, Shadow Fusion for going second. And I just wanted to kind of show you a different route that kind of focused more on... Albaz being the Mac Daddy winner rather than here is um, Shadol Fusion, this is a one card power play, and then kind of Branded Fusion is a one card power play. Fusion Deployment is, in theory, in this deck, a one card power play because, yes, it baits out an Ash, but it also pretty much drags out. Um, it drags out everything you need. So, yes, it's a ba um, bait for Ash, but off the back of that as well, it also lets you kind of um, bait out an, a, a negation on the field. And it also lets you bait out um, other elements because you just go into Albaz and you're going to fuse with all of their board and they're going to be like, yeah, that sucks. Not to mention when we get the contact fuse one that comes out in Dimension Force, um, it's going to be even better. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. I hope this has given you a couple of ideas for your own build if you want to be taking this to, for a bit of casual fun at Locals or if you just want to kind of catch some people off because they're all going to be expecting normal branded with Despias and you're just going to go, yeah, no, I'll go second and I'm just going to wreck the board that you've just built. Anyway, as absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay safe, and of course, happy dueling.